Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at All Hands on Deck by Salamander Games. All Hands on Deck is a card game in which you play as a pirate trying to, trying to build your crew of other pirates. And you want to be the person to do that the fastest. How you're going to do that is by bidding cards from your hand for a card in the middle and you're going to add that card to your hand if you win the bid in hopes that it completes your set of pirates. I'll show you how to play this game down below and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. Alright, here's All Hands on Deck, a game of pirate crew building. This is a hand management uh, set collection game in which you are going to be playing as the captain of a crew of pirates, or at least you're trying to put together a crew of pirates. You are going to have a deck of cards and a doubloon here that is going to be passed around to uh, designate who the uh, captain is, the first player for that round. You also have a couple of expansions, which I'll cover at the end of this rules portion of the video. And uh, this is a simple card game. And uh, what you are going to be doing on your turn, you are going to have a hand of cards dealt to you at the beginning of the game. And uh, they are going to be uh, a combination of numbers with different suits and action cards. So the different types of suits you're going to see, here are two examples right here. The blue one, Sea Sabers. The red one is the uh, Storm Crew or uh, Stormy Sails or something of the sorts. And then you do have the green crew, which is going to be the Black Vipers. Now, what you are trying to accomplish in this game, you are trying to get a winning hand. There are two different types of winning hands. You can get a run of seven consecutive numbers from all of one crew or suit, however you want to say it, such as what you see here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all from the green suit or the black vipers as they're called. Or you can try to get three sets of three consecutive cards from each of the three suits as you see right there. So those are the two combinations or the two types of winning hands that you are trying to achieve in this game. If you are able to do that before any of the other players, you win the game. How this works is whoever is the captain is going to reveal a card off the top of the deck here. And as you can see, this card right here is a five. It's a red five or a stormy sail five. And uh, it's a cook. Now, the name of the cards doesn't really matter too much. However, it is going to uh, play into the expansion, and so you want to pay attention. But most often than not, really what you're paying attention to is the color and the number here. So this card goes face up in front of all the players, and starting with the captain of, for that round, whoever holds the doubloon, you are going to pick a number of your cards to play face down for bidding for that card. So if this is my hand here, maybe I want that red five because it, it sits nicely with my seven and eight. If I can get a six, then I've got a run of four cards there. So I have uh, some desire to maybe get that card. And what I might do is, is I might bid my 10 and one cards of the blue suit. So my uh, 10 and one cards here. I might put these cards out here face down to designate that I am bidding two cards. And then it would go clockwise with all the other players and they would decide how many cards they want to bid, if any. They might pass. They might not want this red five cook. And so they might say, no, I'm not in this round. Then we would reveal our cards, and if it's all number cards, then whoever bid the most is going to be able to take that card. And uh, regardless if you win or lose, whatever you bid is discarded and put in the discard pile. Now, I could have bid my action cards, and I could do this in addition to my number cards, or I could just do my uh, action card. And uh, regardless, I would reveal whatever I have, and then I would play the action card for its action, which this one in particular is very nice, the rum. Take the card that is up for auction. You automatically just win it. So that is a, a really powerful card there. And uh, I would get to add that to my hand. And that's pretty much how a round works. Now, there is a hand size limit. You are not supposed to go over 12 cards. However, you can because this is a pirate game. So you can cheat if you want to. But if somebody calls you a pirate cheat and you are holding more than 12 cards, then you will have to pay a penalty. If uh, you weren't holding more than 12 cards, then they will have to pay a penalty. 
And uh, at the end of a round, the, the balloon will be handed to the next player and they will repeat the process again, trying to get one of these different sets of winning hands. Now, to give you an idea of what some of the other action cards are like in the game, the cut purse here, choose a bid card in play, discard selected cards. So that makes somebody else's hand weaker. The uh, fall off the dock card, discard the auction card, all bid cards and any ac action cards still in play. So this basically uh, makes the round m moot and uh, you are ba banking other players get rid of their good cards. The uh, pieces of eight card, choose a crew or action card in play in the bid, take it after it is, dis after it is discarded. So this allows you to take a card uh, that maybe you played or someone else played, uh, even if you didn't win the bid. So that's nice. And then another one here, Hidden Plunder, take any one card from the discard pile. So those are some examples there of what you have with the action cards. Now, the two different expansions that you see out here, this one over here, this is the uh, Captain's Table expansion, as you can see right there. And this is going to give you a variable setup here, variable player abilities, as each person is going to be dealt a Captain card, and it's going to have a little blurb about who they are. And then on the back side of these cards, it's going to uh, give you some special abilities that you're able to do depending on what phase of the round that uh, you're in. And then it, it also has you get, uh, uh, you also get an, an extra victory condition. So there's a third way that you can win that is only specifically for you. Now each person does have their own special one, so you will want to read those out, make sure everybody's aware of the special win conditions depending on who your captain is. Then the other uh, expansion for this game is the Kraken. Now how the Kraken is going to work, it's going to be dealt into this deck of cards. And when the cap, uh, Kraken comes out, whoever it was dealt to is going to be afflicted by the Kraken. They're going to either have to pay one of their crew members to the Kraken to be fed, or they're just going to have to sit out for that round. Either way, the Kraken is going to be passed to the next player on the left, and then the game will continue. Once the Kraken is fed enough uh, crew members to be satisfied of its hunger, then it will just go away and it will leave the game. Anyhow, that's what you have here with all hands on deck. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and now we're going to share our thoughts on all hands on deck from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So Sam, it's a card game, yeah. and uh, I know your thoughts on how card games look to you, but what was your initial impression of seeing this out on the table? Um, I mean, it looks a little childish, or family-type okay. games, um, cartoonish, yeah. um, pirates. I mean, you sure. know, there wasn't a whole lot uh, that you know scared me away from this game. <laughs> okay, all right, sure. Yeah, um, it's just a simple deck of cards. You do have that uh, that cardboard gold doubloon, and that's the only other uh, element of this game, yeah. component of this game, outside of the deck of cards. And so it really doesn't have much of a table presence to it. Um, it doesn't take up any space. Yeah. It's just a card game. Uh, what was it like for you trying to wrap your mind around what you're trying to accomplish in this game? Well, it is a lot like, you know, card games that you would play as a kid. You know, you're you're trying to get a run of seven or yeah. two, three runs of three or yeah. mm -hmm. same color. Um, and so it just, it's very nostalgic of just sitting around. Like I used to play card games all the time with my family. And so it is very easy. Those, you know. Familiar. Yeah. Probably feels familiar and easy to, to learn. People. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has a lot of elements like gin rummy tied yes. into it, but you're not really passing cards. You're not yeah. really drafting cards in this game. You're you're bidding for a card, and I think that's an interesting mechanic yeah. that uh, may not feel so familiar with some people because uh, bidding is is a, a, a more newer mechanic, I think, in, yeah. in games. What was that like for you to to try to play with other people's minds and bid and outbid and and play those action cards. It it was fun. I did enjoy it. There are times where you do get kind of irritated cuz sure. somebody keeps getting the card or you you read the room wrong mm -hmm. or um something. So there's not really a take that okay. really because nobody knows that anybody else is going to play, but there is times where you're like gosh everybody's getting it i'm not yeah yeah so I, I keep losing it could i could see that being a little frustrating for a non-gamer but nobody really has the advantage okay so yeah and, and a lot of those action cards they're powerful they can really shake things up but like sam's saying it's not as though 
you, it's not as though everybody at the table doesn't have the same yeah. opportunity to have those power cards and play them and get the benefits from them. So uh, I think it's an even thing across the board, but it can be something like, man, I, I really wanted that card and yeah. you just blew me now out of the what water. What, yeah. Now what I'm going to do, yeah. Um, and, and, and that's fun when you're that person that gets to play that card. It's not so great whenever it's played against you, yeah. but then out comes the next hand and yeah. now you can do it back it's to so them. It's so quick that yeah. you don't have a whole lot of time to... Right, yeah. Now, for you, uh, was this a game that you found um, was fun and enjoyable experience for you? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's, uh, I mean, that bidding part and how fast it, it goes, I mean, makes it really enjoyable. Yeah, I think for me, what I enjoy the most about this game is, is that it can end at any point. Yeah. I mean, it can't end within like the first two or three turns, more than likely, but it can end pretty quickly. And, and that's what's happened in the games that we've played of it is that, you know, uh, out comes the cart, we get it, out comes another cart, someone gets it, and then, oh, I got it, yeah. gin rummy yeah. kind of thing, you know, and it's like, what? I thought there was going to be another yeah. turn. And it's very easy to play multiple rounds. Yes, yeah, absolutely. In fact, there's a there's a rules variant in the deck that, or in the rule book that talks about playing multiple rounds and having a more, a longer game yeah. and, and a marathon experience, so to speak. So uh, definitely something you can do if that's something uh, that in your, in your uh, wheelhouse of wanting to try. So let's get to pros and cons on this particular game. What were the things that really stood out to you in a positive way? Um, I mean, it, it's super quick. It's fine. It's easy to understand. Um, Everybody's kind of in an even playing field as far as gamers and non-gamers. I think it's a really good game for non-gamers. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, anything that uh, you didn't care for? Um, I could see how a gamer might get a little bit bored with it. It's the same thing and okay. it, it ends quickly. So I don't see a lot of gamers sitting around playing this game. Okay. Yeah, I think that that would be something I would agree to a certain extent. I think it can be a game that you can enjoy every now and then. I don't know that it's going to be a game that hits the table with a whole lot of frequency yeah. every game night kind of thing. Um, but that's I think that's true for a lot of card games, yeah. quite honestly. Yeah. Um, that Gamers uh, are looking for components. And... Yeah, big, heavy experience. Yeah. This is a smaller, shorter game, and there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But yeah, I think you're right. Um, you mentioned that games, or we both kind of have mentioned that games can end just like that. Yeah. And it may feel like victory was stolen away from you. Yeah. Is that anything that you experienced with this? I mean, maybe a little bit. I think knowing that it was quick, you can play again, you have another try. Sure. try. Um, but I think if it was to happen numerous times in a row, you'd kind of be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, scale of one to 10, love to hate. Where does all hands on deck fall for you? I thought it was pretty good. It's definitely good for non-gamers, so I'd probably give it a 6.6. .6. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, I'm in the same ballpark as Sam. I did enjoy this game. Um, I like card games, and I like card games that give me an, a, an unusual element to consider, and that bidding element does that for me because I'm bidding the cards that I'm needing to complete my sets with. And so that's an interesting concept of having to choose well, do I get rid of this card even though I've already got a run of three working with it, yeah. but I need to really complete this this other run of five or whatever the case may be. Um, so I like that aspect of this game. Yeah. Um, and it works for me. So, But I'm going to give this game a 6.9. Um, it is a good game, and I think it's one that would uh, have a lot of fun when it hits the table. So uh, solid game all around. And that is All Hands on Deck. It is from Salamander Games. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this game. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button to get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.